where he's going, where he's coming from, what I'm actually thinking. Unless he takes this book and gives a donation, he may not see the human form of life for many, many births, millions of lifetimes. And the more he gives donation, the better his chances are taking up devotional service. I just feel a little bit regret that the living and he's going it's like that one song where they sing, uh, although we're going nowhere, we're told we have to hurry. And you get a great realization of that in the airport, how everyone's rushing and rushing, but they're actually going nowhere and doing nothing. Yeah, because Sankirtan is, is love. It's just like you see these boys to our condition, Raghunath, they're out there. We were trying to train them up. So Raghunath was asking me over and over again, what are the lines? Can, I need to follow you to get some more lines. And finally I said to him, you know, there's not, it's not a question of line, it's a question of love. We love Krishna and the Prabhupada, so we go out. And we love these people because they're all parts and parcels of Krishna, so we try to give them Krishna consciousness. And if we feel in that way within our heart, then Krishna will give us the words to say. People are so uh, agitated by the modes of passion and ignorance that the slightest approach by a devotee they consider to be badgering. But anybody who's a little bit uh, conscious can see the devotees don't badger anyone. They ask this, this question, do you badger people? One time a newsman asked me, do you badger people? And I said, no, we don't badger anyone. But sometimes people unfortunately feel badgered by observing the activities of the devotee. You can see he's not badgering anyone or disturbing, but he's just giving everyone a chance to meet Krishna. There are millions of dollars here every minute being used for sinful purposes and we're just barely denting it for the service of God. We never feel satisfied. What a powerful means of spreading Krishna consciousness is this book distribution, how effective it is. The prophet said this book selling is the real preaching of our cult, and every day I feel that more and more, because I see the results. People are unsubmissive in this age. Unless people are submissive, how they can be preaching? <laughs> but somehow or other, they're giving so many books, and that is real success. People are surrendering to Krishna. Such a concentrated form of service. So many people are being affected from this way, from the pushing forward of Krishna consciousness externally. Every day I'm very enlivened. I just want to see more and more devotees go on Sankirtan <laughs> and learn the art of book distribution. At the same time, every day I'm reflecting how internally my heart has become cleansed. So many opportunities to become humble. So many opportunities to become tolerant. Mm -hmm. 
so much opportunity to develop compassion because we're seeing firsthand how people are suffering. So in this way, every day the devotee should judge his advancement. We shouldn't go through a day of Krishna consciousness dull-headed. Every day we should see how we're advancing by how many devotees we've made or books we distributed. Books distributed means devotee made in due course of time. These are transcendental seeds. Everyone that's planted in due course of time produces fruits of the love of God. So how many devotees I've made and how much of the dirt in my own heart has become cleansed. Just to look up and see the other devotees distributing, just to stop sometimes and look and see everyone selling a book. It's so enlivening. I was thinking yesterday you were in the airport while I was giving one book out that right now 10 books are going out actually, or 12 books maybe, or 13 books at that particular moment. And it was a very ecstatic thought. I was thinking, I'm giving one book, but actually if I think about it, there's so many books being distributed. And you can expand that. You can think right now all over America. There are so many devotees doing this exact same thing. So many people are holding Prabhupada's book, looking at Prabhupada's book, reading Prabhupada's book. Yeah, they say we're phony. We're, even they see us smiling and they, think just, they look at us like actors and actresses. But we're smiling because we actually we're seeing the possibility that this person is going to become liberated from the cycle of birth and death after millions and millions of births. This particular conditioned soul, out of so many millions of conditioned souls, just met Krishna's representative in Krishna's book. And that's why we're, actually why we're smiling. So, actually in Sangha times, it's like you don't become disturbed with the karmi, but you actually become disturbed. You do become disturbed when no one is taking. But it, it's because you want to serve Krishna by giving people a book. And you can understand that actually it's only because Krishna is not sending the people to take them that there's no... You become no, disturbed with yourself. Yeah, and you become disturbed that Krishna is obviously seeing that I'm not completely purely motivated and therefore he's trying to uh, correct that impure motivation. And so he, he makes adjustments to send you demons or to send you uh, uninterested people one after another. And this way he forces you to pray for his help and mercy to engage in his service for the spiritual master. This man was a, uh, I believe he was a Catholic. And I was preaching to him about uh, how the world had changed from the time when he was young. And could you remember that? Could you remember when you were young what it was like when your parents used to ask you uh, to be home at a certain time and you had to be there? And, so many things and he was very much in agreement with me and I began to discuss the soul how that was the uh, basis of all religion understanding the soul and I said do you believe in the soul and he said why sure and uh, then he began to say he said well that's because I had a good upbringing so I began to preach to him about how the difficulties in the school, I think he was a school teacher also, and I was saying how the, the difficulties in the schools uh, were there because the young people were not getting any training at home from the very beginning of life about God and spiritual life. And he was in very, uh, he was in agreement with me. He's now making comments about his own upbringing, his parents, and so on. The conversation is so light, but at the same time so um, to the point that the, uh, the ultimate objective of getting a donation is incidental. I asked him, well, so can you give a donation? Oh, well, yeah. And he really shot for his wallet like a, you know, that was a, the natural sequence of events. We've had a nice exchange. We talked a little bit about philosophy. Then I call him back because he's such a nice man. I give him the second volume. And he's very uh, impressed. Completely satisfied, he walks away. 
few people will stop. I have to be so intense with this one person, so intensely Krishna conscious, that this person favorably accepts Krishna conscious and gives a donation. And that's the, they don't want to, they're so puffed up, they don't think they have to recognize anybody. But the devotee has to be outgoing and alive enough that they have to deal with him. They're, they're my friends, actually, because they're, they're all parts and parcels of Krishna. We have to see everyone as a potential uh, devotee of the Lord. We have to be aspiring on Sankirtan to come to the platform of feeling an intimate relationship, friendship with every living entity. If we enter into that consciousness, that is the perfection. If we see everyone as part and parcel of Krishna and treat them in that way, and actually feel intimately associated with them, those feelings will overwhelm that conditioned soul so that he'll take a book. Hmm? This is a friendly guy from England. Nice guy. And I'm telling that our books about wor are about world peace, the need for us to... Uh, see beyond these books present the understanding how to see beyond the designations of english and american black and white and relate to one another as, as human beings as real as, as people part of the same planet europeans like that i'm sorry i signed this book in about three places already just finding another page <laughs> but he, he likes it he likes me He's very friendly. He's going to give a nice donation. We're giving this out. There's no cost. It's uh, because they just really good thoughts to help us appreciate one another and make the world situation a little better. We just ask everyone to give a little donation to the help we're doing for the help we're doing for education in this regard. So he gives a couple of dollars. I'm asking him to give a little more. I think he ends up giving 20. Oh, he, gave, he gives 10 marks. 10 francs, or 10 pounds, $20. I'm asking him about the, who's on there. Is that the queen? She's still alive? <laughs> I said, well, gee, and I show him our dollar bills full of, on our dollars. You know, it's President Washington. He's, he's old. He's. I didn't realize the queen was still alive. Then he asks me, well, do you have any with President Grant on it? I said, no, I don't have any of those for you. <laughs> I just gave him back five singles. Told him most people leave 20. So he ended up leaving 22 because he gave two to start with. He didn't want to give that much, but because I was nice to him, he agreed. Nice and persistent, also. Very persistent. Very persistent, but not in an amusing way, not in an annoying way. Because the devotee is so blissful. He can insist that people surrender. And they'll, and they'll surrender because they're seeing how blissful he is. He'll give it up. Actually, when I talk to people that are that old, I always think in my mind, like when you look at her, you can see that the flower of youth is gone. So there's the beautiful daughter on the right, and there's the mother on the left. The conditioned souls, they never look and see that this will be the end for this girl also. And I always see, oh, here's mother, here's daughter. One is very youthful and attractive, and the other one is old and near death. And I'm thinking, well, this one needs to give the book, get the book. But actually, everyone is near death, so everyone's equally needful. Each person is uniquely situated within material nature, <coughs> and each person requires, on the part of the devotee, prayer and dependence upon Krishna for inspiration. How to present the line to make them accept the book. So they stop and they have to deal with you. He wants to come out feeling uh, success. 
He wants to enter into a successful relationship and come out thinking, I'm actually a good person. So he doesn't want to be too intimate with anyone. Therefore, he has all these defenses. He doesn't want to be too intimate unless it's going to produce this result, a successful relationship which boosts his, his ego. So he's got all these built-in um, barriers and the devotee has to break them down and become um, his intimate associate, understand his material situation, relate to him, assure him that he's actually a pretty nice guy and subtly suggest in some way that, that he could do better by accepting this Krishna conscious literature, by giving a donation. Um, they actually become a better person. This guy was into computers. So I was saying that just as uh, he'd already gotten one of our books, so I was trying to convince him there. He pulls out the Bhagavad Gita and he's showing me that he's already got the Gita, so I'm trying to give him another volume. Or no, he had a Bhagavatam, I believe, and I'm trying to give him the Gita. So he's, he said, well, I've given too much already. I'm saying, well, this is one of many, but see, the Bhagavad Gita is the first book. You should definitely have the Bhagavad Gita. So he's trying to say, well, look, why don't you do this? Why don't you trade me for the book that you've already got, that I've already have, and I'll take this since it's the first volume. And I said, no, no, actually, you should have all, all the books. I'd like to give you the whole set of them. You couldn't carry that, could you? He was a computer man. So I'm saying, well, just as behind a computer, there's got to be a big brain. Computers don't make themselves, and they certainly don't fix themselves, do they? I mean, you know that. That's your job. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, just like that, this whole world is running on the strength of some great intelligence. Do you believe in God? And he said, oh, yeah. And I said, oh, great. He'll love this book. Prabhupada said, this is our credit that selling so many books to people who have no interest in, in the Vedas. Somehow we are creating an interest that's preaching. The whole time I was talking to him, I was thinking that verse in Bhagavad Gita, a little advancement on this path saves one from the greatest fear. I knew I wasn't going to, if I got anything from him, I wasn't going to get much because he'd already given, and he, and, he, and he only gave $3, and he felt that $3 was too much. <laughs> but I'm convinced that if he had the book, somebody would read it. He's saying, give a dollar, it's worth that. Then I felt, well, Krishna obviously wants me to talk to him. I mean, we've come into contact with each other. So there's no point in... Uh, giving up, giving up. I was determined that this man had to give something else. Sometimes the devotees, they're not patient on Sankirtan and they're thinking that, well, I'm losing time here, I'm losing time there. But actually, Krishna is the time factor. And if we're trying sincerely to serve Krishna, then time becomes a servant of the devotee, not an impediment. Although there's so many people coming through O'Hare Field, the percentages of people that actually stop and take are very small. And you have to be a little bit selective, otherwise you just exhaust yourself because they just they know us so well from all over the country and O'Hare is a is a stopover for so many flights. So they they've seen hundreds of devotees over the last six or seven years. Plus they make an announcement every four times an hour that just stops a lot of people from even talking to us. So finally he agrees, all right, I'll give you one dollar and I'll take the book, I'll take the second copy. I let him go. So the idea behind this is that, is in that, that you're not going to meet very many people like this that you would go into such a discussion with. And like Priyosh mentioned, sometimes some of the ways I think it would be a waste of time, but it's good for the devotee every now and then to like sharpen his wits for preaching from Prabhupada's books. 
on certain types of people. It's very enlivening for the devotee. If he spends five or ten minutes with some guy and actually tries to preach in such a way as to de defeat him or uh, just directly present Prabhupada's philosophy, just like if you read this book, Life Comes From Life. But what I'm saying is that all the devotees can actually say they can sell many books on the basis of God. On the basis of God. They can. Actually, I was thinking yesterday how amazing it is that we carry on these conversations with a conditioned soul, and they're so absorbed in where they're from and where they're going and what their bodily connection is. I'm Norwegian, I'm American, I'm from Africa, I'm from Arabia. And, and when devotees meet, uh, you, could, you could just imagine how silly that conversation would sound amongst devotees. You know, I'm from Arabia, I'm from America. Oh, really? My father's from, you know, he would, I'm from, the, from the devotional platform. It's a very insipid uh, premise for conversation. But we engage in that way nine hours a day. And because we're actually asking them, we understand. We're actually saying, where's your body from? Oh, where's your body going? Where's your body been? Did your body have a good time? <laughs> what is your mind telling you? What is your mind telling you? Because we're actually understanding that they themselves, the soul, they're not from any of those places. I believe this was a mother and her children. I think this lady we gave both books to. And we did oh, give the she said, Gita. this is the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, right. She knew the Bhagavad Gita. She knew the Bhagavad Gita. So I gave her the Bhagavad Gita. Maharaj is talking to her son, I think. Or no, now another man has come up. The man was a film producer. So I said, no kidding, what well, we're filming out here. <laughs> I really liked it a lot. This is, a, this is something that goes on a lot in the airport. The devotees uh, take advantage of the association to uh, communicate what they're actually experiencing. When they're talking to the conditioned souls or some new line, or some, or what the person said, or what you realized by talking to this person, or how you convinced this person. Uh, and this, in, in this way, you get great strength. So, when we distribute books, we should never become discouraged that there'll be no result from this. But just give it some time, and then the incarnation of the Lord, the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam, will actually Engaged in his pastimes of changing the consciousness, as is described in the Bible, misdirected civilization. Yeah, I just got these books here from the Hare Krishnas, and it was basically a good experience. Um, I've heard a lot about them soliciting in airports before, but I'd never encountered any until today. And I feel like I got my money's worth. I've heard a lot about the books they gave me, and. I'm excited to read them. I, I don't know, I see a lot of negative reaction from people around me to them because they can't accept their way of life or what they're trying to tell us, but I've been exposed to different types of meditation and yoga and I feel what they're saying is useful and it's needed in modern life. I don't know, I think in the Western world we, um, we think we're number one and we just, we ignore the other half of the world, the Eastern Hemisphere, and they've got a lot of knowledge there and they have more They've been around longer than we have, so we should learn something from them, even if they haven't reached the levels of materialism and whatnot that we have. I mean, we're not superheroes. This is the most significant work, actually. The body should never be discouraged if there's not getting results. We distributed so many books, but where are the devotees? We're in the beginning stage of establishing a whole new world order in Krishna consciousness. This is the most the devotees see with vision, a little bit of vision like that, and they'll become satisfied by distributing books. This is the most important work. Without laying the foundation, nothing else can go on. So the foundation is educating the people. Education, who is God? What are his laws? What are his desires? And that's what these books are filled with. So I just pray that by this film, every devotee will become inspired to distribute Prabhupada's books.